the Assassin X 120 RSE White from Thermalright. It's white, it has ARGB LEDs, and it looks really pretty. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Before I get into this overview, just to have full disclosure, Thermalright did send me over this cooler to review, but as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. On to the quick overview of this cooler. There are three variants of the Assassin X120 SE. There is the Assassin X120 RSE. There is the Assassin X120 RSE ARGB. And the Assassin X120 RSE White ARGB. These coolers range in price between 20 and 27 USD. And those prices are taken from Amazon.com. Okay, let's see what you get in the box. There is the heatsink and fan, of course. There is the installation guide, a set of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, the mounting hardware. There is no ARGB connector hub, so your motherboard will need an ARGB header if you want to use these LEDs. Taking a closer look at this heatsink, there are four six millimeter continuous direct contact heat pipes. The white coating on the heatsink looks well coated, but the mounting bars and the fastening bar are not painted white, which means if you do want to do an all white build, you will need to paint them yourself. Moving on to the fan. The fan is a Thermalrite TLC12CW-S. The W stands for white and the S stands for ARGB. It is a four pin PWM fan. It has nine blades. It has little rubber pads on four of the corners and has a max rated RPM of 1550. The dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 148 millimeters high by 120 millimeters wide by 71 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, there will not be RAM clearance issues for micro ATX and ATX builds. For socket compatibility, the Assassin X120 RSE is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets, but it is not compatible with the HPC lineup. And for AMD compatibility, it is compatible with AM4, which means it's compatible with AM5. Moving on to how to install this CPU cooler, I will be installing this onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets is different. So if you are planning on installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can use the box that your motherboard came in. You will need a PH2 screwdriver, as well as you should have some isopropyl alcohol. And since we are installing this onto an AM4 motherboard, we will need the backplate that the motherboard came with. Align the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. With the motherboard flat, place the AMD plastic spacers over each hole. Then find the mounting bars and the AMD mounting screws, placing the mounting screws through the corresponding holes on the mounting bars. Then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers. Then screw the mounting screws into the standoffs of the backplate, making sure the mounting bars face out. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean the CPU off with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now making sure to remove the fan from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the coal plate. Once you have, place the heatsink coal plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bar to the screws on the fastening bar. Then screw the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once that's done, you can install the fan onto the heatsink and plug in the PWM and ARGB connectors to the motherboard. And that's the installation. Now we'll go over the fan's PWM range and show you the ARGB LEDs of the fan. First, the PWM range. 
So at 100% PWM, this motherboard is showing this fan having an RPM of 1700-ish, and that gives this fan a DBA of 36.4. And as always, that is measured from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing this fan having an RPM of 300-ish. And this has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. Okay then, now taking a look at the ARGB LEDs. I think the LEDs look really good. The spread is really nice. The colors are very vibrant and everything looks really nice to me at least, but what do you think? Now, before moving on to the temperature testing, if you do appreciate all the testing I do here, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. 100% of what I receive goes towards buying new things to review. A link is in the description. Plus, if you haven't watched my CPU cooling testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. So the Assassin X120 SE in the 35 dBA noise equalized 67 watt test had an average steady state CPU temperature of 60.9 C. Then at full speed, the temperature only went down 0.1 C to 60.8 C. So no temperature difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests. For the 87 watt test, when noise equalized to 35 dBA, the Assassin X120 SE had the average steady state CPU temperature of 74.4 C, which has it pretty much tying the Freezer 34 eSports. Then at full speed, the average steady state CPU temperature again didn't really change much with a temperature of 74.2 C. Moving on to the 150 watt testing, in the noise equalized 150 watt test, the average steady state CPU temperature was 81.1 C. Then letting the fan run at full speed had the average CPU temperature drop to 80.7 C. So again, no real temperature difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests. So what do I think of the Assassin X120 RSE White? It's a great CPU cooler at a really competitive price. This cooler performed very well in all my tests for only 27 USD, which has to make the base Assassin X120 SE version the best price performance cooler that I've ever tested because it's only 20 USD on amazon.com right now. Now there is no ARGB with the base version, but if you're looking for just price to performance, the Assassin X120 RSE is likely what you're gonna wanna get because again, it's only 20 USD. But the Assassin X does have the same issue as the Assassin King 120 and the Peerless Assassin 120 do, and that's that Thermal Right has them priced very close to one another. There's really only like a five to $10 price difference as you go up in size, and there's only like a one to two Celsius difference as you go up in size. So is there really a point of going up in size? Now, as I always say, pricing might be different in your area, so it really does come down to the availability and pricing in your area on which cooler makes the most sense for you. Because all in all, I would be pretty comfortable using this cooler with a stock 5900X or Intel's equivalent if all I was planning on doing was gaming, which for a 20 US dollar cooler is pretty crazy. But if you are wanting to do more than just game, that's when I would recommend you start looking at some of the larger size coolers. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. You may want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what this video was about. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.